All right, in this video, I'm going to walk through the method on how to solve general motion problems, uh, specifically using relative motion analysis. And in this case, we'll be doing vector analysis. In the next video, I'll go over scalar analysis, but both are in the field of relative motion. Um, so when you look at a problem like this, this is a crankshaft. And different parts of this machine are going to be moving with different types of motion. Remember AB here is the crank. It's going to have pure rotation about point A, about that fixed axis that goes into and out of the screen at A. Uh, the piston over here at point C is going to experience pure linear translation as it oscillates from left to right inside, inside the slider. And remember BC here, the, the connecting rod is going to experience general motion, which is a combination of rotation and translation at the same time. So with problems like this, typically what we do is we start with the information that we know, typically on one of the members, and we'll actually end up sort of transposing that across the, the system to find the thing that we're looking for. In this case, what we're looking for is the velocity of C when the system is in this position with the crank at 30 degrees off the horizontal. So because member AB, the crank, is experiencing pure rotation, we can use the, the equations of circular motion to find the tangential velocity really easily of any point on it. And the most convenient point for us to do that is at point B. So its tangential velocity will be going like this to match the sense of the rotation, and it's going to be 90 degrees from the axis of that member. And it is simply equal to the angular velocity times the distance from A to B. So that's the tangential velocity of point B, but it's also the actual velocity of point B in this exact moment of time. And because point B is also connected to member BC at that hinge, then this is the actual velocity of this part of BC uh, at this moment. It's going off in this direction, and we can actually find the angle here. If you wanted, you could draw on the horizontal like this. And if we have the axis of AB, we can see that this is 30 degrees, which makes this 30 degrees, and because the angle here is 90, then we have 60 degrees up here. So the absolute velocity of the hinge at B, on you know whether we're looking at member AB or BC, is is equal to omega r directed at this uh, you know, 60 degrees off the horizontal, looking to the left side. Now, if we want to have come up with an expression for the velocity at C. We can write something where, if you remember back when we talked about relative velocity, we have an expression we can say that the velocity of C is equal to the velocity of B plus the velocity of C with respect to B. Now, if you think about what the velocity of C with respect to B is, because BC is, uh, is not stretching or compressing or, or changing shape at all, this is totally rigid, then point C cannot have any relative velocity in line with the axis of itself. Like it can't, point C cannot move directly towards B, otherwise this member would be buckling or something like that. Uh, so from the perspective of B, point C can only rotate about it. So if we drew it on, it could go down like this, or it could go up like that. And whichever one it ends up being, uh, it doesn't actually really matter because it's going to drop out of the expression because we can rewrite V, C with respect to B, which again is this. If we rewrite our expression here, we have VC is equal to VB. Uh, in terms of vector properties, this is just equal to omega BC, uh, and then we cross it to RBC. We take the vector cross product. And you'll see that there's actually, we don't even need to know what the relative velocity of C with respect to B is, because we only need to know what the angular velocity of BC is, and also RBC. Now RBC is given to us here at 0 0.5 meters, and we can find it in component form, um, which we will need in the vector cross product. So you can see that VCB has dropped out of the expression, and the only unknowns are actually VC and omega BC. Right? This is unknown, and so is this. We actually know what VB is, because we can calculate it using omega AB and RAB. And we, can, we also know what RBC is. We can find it in component form. So when we're taking the cross product and we're analyzing this as a, a vector equation, we have to write these as vectors with three components in order for the cross product to work. And basically, we're going to get a whole bunch of zeros, mostly, uh, for the, the bottom row. And at some point, we're going to switch to parametric form and solve this as a system of linear equations. And we're going to be left with two equations, and we have two unknowns. So we'll be able to solve these simultaneously. So let's actually go and solve the problem now. Um, it's going to help us right away if we find out what all of the angles are of this inner triangle. So if we call this angle alpha, we can find that using sine law. 
uh, where we just have sine 30 over 0 0.5 is equal to sine alpha over 0 0.2. And we can rearrange that to find that alpha is equal to 11.537 degrees. And then we can do the same uh, for this angle here. Let's call this angle gamma. Uh, we can just actually have 180 degrees minus 30 minus 11.537 and that gives us gamma is equal to 138.463 degrees. Now if we want to solve this expression for VB, uh, we have already omega AB is 25 radians per second and R is just 0 0.2. We can do this as a scalar equation, it's going to be good enough. So this is equal to 25 radians per second times 0 0.2 meters and that gives us VB which is 5 meters per second and that is 60 degrees off the horizon coming up from the left side. At this point it's actually nice to find out what the X and Y component of VB is so we can draw it on just right here this would be VBX and VBY which would make VBX negative 5 cos 60 and VBY positive 5 sine 60. The, the X1 is negative because it's going opposite the coordinate axis, which we should label the positive values being X and Y. Okay, we can also just realize that this from B to C, like that, this is RBC. Its length is equal to LBC, which is 0 0.5 meters. And if we want to find the X and Y components of it, we can just label those on like this. So our BCY is this going to be equal to negative 0 0.5 sine of 11.537, which is equal to 0 0.1 meters. And our BCX is going to equal positive 0 0.5 cos 11.537 meters, which is approximately 0 0.48. Nine, nine. All right, so let's write our quantities in vector form. So first we have VB, and this is just going to be equal to VBX, VBY, and VBZ in a three-dimensional vector. So that gives us, as I mentioned before, I didn't actually write it above, but we have negative five cos 60, positive five sine 60, and zero which can be simplified to negative 2.5, 4.33, and zero. If we write VC, um, it's just equal to VC times, you can write it like this, it's VC times negative I hat, because we know its entire direction is, is pointing in the negative X direction. And you know we can rewrite that as VC times negative one, zero, zero, or more simply, just negative VC, zero, zero. Which just indicates that its entire magnitude is basically purely to the left. We also need an expression for omega CB, which we haven't actually labeled on yet. So if we inspect this, if we look at the crankshaft here, as AB is rotating up like this, it's going to pull point B in this direction. So it's basically going to be lifting point B as C slides like this, and that's going to cause this BC basically to have a clockwise rotation. So we can label it on, if we want, just like that, omega BC. If you get this sense wrong, it doesn't really matter because we'll just end up with a negative, uh, a negative value for it, but it's helpful if you can try to guess which way it's going uh, based on the diagram itself. But if also you want to write this in vector form, because this is going uh, clockwise, and if you remember the right hand rule, if you curl your fingers in the direction that it's going and you point your thumb outwards, uh, your thumb is basically going to be going into the page. So that is in the negative Z direction or negative K hat direction if you prefer. You can write that like this. We can have omega CB times negative K hat, which is equal to omega CB times zero, zero, negative one, which we can also just express as zero, zero, negative omega CB. Okay, let's just bring everything up a little bit so we don't run out of space. And we can also write our vector RCB, uh, which is just 
the x component where we calculated up here was 0 0.4899. Its y component was negative 0 0.1. That should have had a negative sign on it. 0 0.1 and 0. Okay, so now we can plug everything into this expression for VC. So the VC vector was just negative VC 0, 0 equals VB, which was negative 2.5, 4.33, and 0. And then we add the cross product of omega BC, which was 0, 0, negative omega BC cross RBC, which is 0 0.4899, negative 0 0.1, and 0. And if you forget how to apply the vector cross product, I'll just put the method right here in red. So for us, we can apply that to the vectors that we have. And that cross product is going to become 0 minus negative 0 0.1 times negative omega CB, then negative 0 0.4899 omega CB minus 0, and on the bottom row is just going to be 0 minus 0. And that's all going to simplify to negative 0 0.1 omega CB, negative 0 0.4899 omega CB, and 0. So at this point, we want to switch to parametric form, which is basically our system of linear equations. So we'll just write each row from our vector expression as their own equation. And we'll have negative VC is equal to negative 2.5 minus 0 0.1 omega CB. And then we also have 0 is equal to 4.33 minus 0 0.4899 omega CB. So we can solve the second one first because there's only one variable in it. We can just rearrange to have omega CB is equal to 4.33 over 0 0.4899 and that simplifies to 8.839 and that was radians per second. Now we can take that and we can plug it back into this expression up here and we have negative VC is equal to negative 2.5 minus 0 0.1 times 8.839 radians per second. And simplify a little bit, we get VC is equal to 2.5 plus 0 0.8839. And we find that VC is equal to 3.38. That is units of meters per second. And it is actually to the left, despite it being a positive number. And the reason for that, if we go back up to the diagram, we had originally drawn on VC pointing to the left. So when we find a positive value for it, that indicates that we have chosen the right direction. So it is positive. So the velocity of point C at this exact moment where the crank is 30 degrees off the horizontal is going to be equal to 3.38 meters per second to the left. Okay, cool. So join me in the next video and we're going to work through this exact same problem again. Uh, also using relative motion analysis, but taking a slightly different approach using scalars instead of having to use the vector cross product and analyze with vectors. So I will see you there.